Welcome, babe. We're already in session from last week's episode two. Enjoy. It's the time. It's the age. It's, you know, the season. I mean, right now it's COVID and people are dying and there is the pressure to accomplish certain things because you don't know when your dying day is. Maybe a family member is putting you under pressure. Maybe your friends, your peers, your bosses, your leaders, your mentors. Those people are constantly asking you questions that make you feel like you need to be doing something significant. And if you aren't, then you're failing. You see, when we listen to other people's voices, those voices can be discouraging. And you will fail to see the little steps that you're taking that are changing you. In my times of rest, in my times of seclusion, in my times of being apart from the world, there are things that began to happen to me. There's a steadfastness in my relationship with God that began to grow. Before I could have sustained my relationship by always being around other people, by always ministering, by always being in a position where I needed to serve. But now when I was in seclusion, that relationship was sustained on my prayer my reading of the word, my calling upon the Lord and expecting him to answer me and my seeing him at work. It had nothing to do with other people. It had nothing to do with the next person. I was not dependent on man because you know what? The fear of man brings a snare. At the end of the day, I realized my relationship with my children began to change. Where I was unavailable because I was so busy doing what everybody expected me to do, I became available and connected with Abandoban. My personal relationship with Tembi began to change. Suddenly, I could see Utembi for the beautiful woman that she is, for the beautiful soul that she is, for the thinker that she is. I began to appreciate myself. I began to appreciate my abilities. I began to appreciate my character. I began to enjoy my own company. I began to enjoy my own presence. I began to enjoy my own jokes. That is why I think that I write. I think that I pray. I think that I read. Because I think and then I write. I think and then I pray. I think and then I read. I discovered a certain part of myself because I wasn't running at everybody else's pace and I had taken that time to slow down at my own. You see, you have to understand that the barometer of society will never be satisfied. And you will not be satisfied by everybody else's barometer of you. At the end of the day, People will always judge you. People will always expect from you. People will always want what people think they can get from you. And people will not celebrate you. So there's a point in my life when I despised my personal growth, my personal barometer, because people were not satisfied. But guess what? Nobody's ever satisfied with you. It's not their life. It's not their race. They will never be satisfied. They'll always have an opinion. They'll always have something to say. I laughed at the end of 2020 when G65 released her, her song, and her family went out on social media and distanced themselves from it. A few weeks later, she was gone. The same family was celebrating her, calling her a go-getter, calling her someone who was inspirational to them. Human beings will never be satisfied. People will enforce their pace on you. They will enforce their style on you. They will even enforce their opinions on you. And they will expect you to allow those things to work in your life. And when it fails, they will sit back and say, At the same time, when you do things and you're doing them out of the abundance of your heart, at first they may ridicule you. They may look at you and say, But at the end of the day, they will celebrate you. We celebrate everyone who took a step that they were convicted about. 
People that take steps because they are pressured to, we tend to laugh at. I am so grateful for G65's life. I didn't know her, I didn't meet her, I just saw articles about her, I heard her song, I have it in my phone. And I am grateful because when I watched her, I realized it's never too late. There is this lie that we continuously peddle, and I don't know why we do that. When we keep saying there's no time, there's no time, there's no time. Yes, in terms of the second coming, there is no time. But in terms of your purpose, that one is under God's time. He says in Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season, a time and a purpose under heaven. God knows what he needs you to do, when he needs you to do it, and for how long he needs you to do it. So even if I think you are delaying, it's not up to me. Neither does it, neither is it uh, the pre determining factor of whether or not you will achieve. You will achieve because God says so. You will achieve because God means for it to happen. You know, I'm reminded of our master's life, how he lived for 33 years but only ministered for three. What was he doing the other 30? Preparing, resting, hiding. There were things we didn't know about him. There were things we didn't know he was doing, but those things were preparing him for the work that he needed to do. G65, I didn't know her. I still don't know her. I don't know her family. All I know is that at 65, she released a song. The song is in my phone. Her picture is in my phone. And every time I look at it, I'm inspired because I know it's never too late. I could start at two and steadily do my destiny. But at the same time, I could start at 27 and steadily do my destiny for two years and be dead at 29. Or I could start at 65 and steadily impact a life for generations to come because I did that one thing. It doesn't matter what people think about your pace. It's not theirs. The life is not theirs. They don't have command over you. They don't have command over your days. Thank you so much for joining us, babe. Next week, we start a new segment called Storytime. Let me know if you want personal stories or you want fiction stories. Either way, I'm game. See you next time. Do stay tuned. Love you. God bless. <laughs>